when I got saved in 1996, God really started changing a lot of things in my life. And this was halfway through my senior year in high school, and I left and I went to college. And my first year in college, God was doing these neat things in my life. But guess what happens after a period of time? You start falling into a routine. You start falling into ruts. And the newness wears off. The freshness wears off. And I don't know about how many of you can remember when the internet started coming out, we, people had dial-up. And you would try to connect to the internet, and as you would connect, you would notice your computer would not be working as good, and you would have to go up there and hit the button called refresh. And it would reconnect, and it would help you to gain faster ac uh, access to stuff on the internet. Now we have high speed, and yes, the refresh button's still up there, but we don't use it that much because now we have such higher quality of internet than we used to have. You really don't need it. But for me, by the second year of my relationship with God, the newness was wearing off. I was falling into a rut. I became on a leadership team at our BSU, and they took us to this conference down in New Orleans. Now, of course, you've got college students, and you're taking them to New Orleans. Last thing you're going to think is they're going to go to a leadership conference to get closer to the Lord in New Orleans. Well, everybody's talking about all the things they want to do in New Orleans. Well, I'm from South Mississippi. New Orleans was nothing new to me. I went to New Orleans quite a bit. But when I got there, they had these lists of people that were doing these seminars, and these speakings and stuff, talking about your relationship and different things these people were, their specialty of what they were going to teach you. So you could pick where you wanted to go. And I came across this, this man and his son and had discipleship beside it. I said, my heart's a lot into discipleship. I said, I, I want to go and I want to learn more about how to be a disciple maker. So I went into this class and these two men up there, they were talking about it. You could tell they were passionate about what they were saying and the things they were saying. I was hanging on every word that they were saying. Now, of course, I've seen their names and it didn't register in my mind who these men were. And when it was over, it was lunchtime and everybody just scattered to go to lunch. Well, not me. I ran to the front of that class and I started talking to those men about it. And I was asking them questions about when they was telling me about God doing things in their lives. I was like, how can I get that to happen in my life? How can this stuff and that stuff that you're talking about and you're trying to teach about, how can that really be in my life? And those two men looked at one another and they smiled and they said, son, you hungry? I said, I'm a college student. I'm always hungry. And, and they said, let's go eat. They took me to lunch and we the three of us sat at this table and they broke down to me the importance about how to allow God to work in your life. Well, these men's name was Henry Blackaby and his son. That still didn't rest in my mind who these men were. But God used that moment to really impact my life. The title of this message is The Seven Seas for a New Year. I'm not going to talk to you about New Year's resolution and you to break it in a few days or a few weeks. But I am going to challenge you in the next three to four weeks, we're going to work through a series that I hope will challenge you to refresh your relationship with God. Refresh your relationship with God. Turn to Joshua chapter 7. We're going to look at a few key verses, and we're going to look at Joshua chapter 6 and Joshua chapter 7 this morning. But I want you to catch these key verses. Joshua 7, verses 10 through 12. The Lord said to Joshua, Get up! Why have you fallen on your face? Israel has sinned. They have transgressed my covenant that I have commanded them. They have taken some of the devoted things they have stolen and laid up for them among their own belongings. Therefore, the people of Israel cannot stand before their enemies. 
They turn their backs before their enemies because they have become devoted to the destruction. I will be with you no more unless you destroy the devoted things from among you. Now, I don't care about your past. Not where you have been, but where are you going? Many times we dwell in the past about where we have been. And these men, one of the things they challenged me with, they said, Wes, your past is your past. Leave it there. It's time now to work on your future and where you're going and what you're going to become. What are you going to do for God? Where are you going to be committed to God? And how are you going to accomplish that for God? Not you, but God. One of the things they challenged me with was get people around you that are going to keep you accountable. I love to have people around me that makes my relationship with God stronger. That can challenge me in my relationship with God. Are there people around you that you allow them to be in your inner circle of your person? Do, they, do those people challenge you to become more Christ-like? Do they challenge you to have a closer relationship with God? If they don't, you need to change your people that are the closest to you. When we look at this situation that's happening in the book of Joshua, there was a covenant that the Lord had made with Joshua and his people. There was a work in which the Lord was using Joshua and his people to accomplish great tasks. But the reason they were being successful, the way they were accomplishing this, was because of their commitment to God. But guess what? The same, that same Lord that made that commitment with Joshua and His people, He wants to make the same commitment to you and me. He wants to make a covenant with you and me to become the people that He has called us to be. He doesn't want us to settle for second. He doesn't want us to settle for mediocre. He wants us to accomplish that which is great for His glory and for His honor, not yours or mine. Amen. The first C that we need to look at is the first one is the commandment. Look in chapter 6, verses 17 and 18. When you look there in verse 17 of chapter 6 of Joshua, This is what He is showing us about the commandment. All that is within it shall be devoted to the Lord for destruction. They were to go into this area and to glorify and to honor God. They were to destroy everything. They weren't to keep anything except the certain things the Lord had told them to keep. And that was to be put in this box for worshiping and glorifying God. But everything else was to be destroyed. By doing this action of destroying everything was keeping the commandment in which the Lord had told them to do. It continues there in verse 17. Where this lady, the prostitute, had given them the spies safety in her house. They had made a promise to her and her family that we would protect you. And as He was to protect them, their lives were to be spared. And that was to be honored. That was a commandment. And it was done. Verse 18. Here's more that is said. But you, keep yourselves from the things devoted to destruction. He's saying, look, don't be grabbing a hold of the stuff you don't need to be grabbing a hold of. The things that are supposed to be destroyed, destroy them. It continues on. Lest when you devote them, you take any of the devoted things and make, to, and make the count of Israel and the things will be destruction, brought trouble upon it. He's saying, look, you bring this stuff back to camp, it's not just going to affect you. It's going to affect the entire camp. Guess what? Calvary, when we don't keep God's commandments, when we don't keep the things in which God has told us to do, 
It doesn't just affect you. It affects our church. It affects each and every one of us. Many times we say, well, people don't know what I'm doing. It's behind closed doors. Guess what? God sees it. God knows it. And God doesn't honor it. And when God doesn't honor it, He can't honor you. And He can't honor the things in which you are trying to do because He can't work through you because there's sin that is separating you and Him from breaking the commandments. No matter what those commandments may be, when you break them, there's separation. Here's the thing. Are you willing to hit the refresh button on those commandments you know you're not keeping? Those commandments that you have fallen short on? Hit the refresh button. Start over. Ask God to forgive you. And keep it the commandments. The second C is the one, is the commitment. Look in chapter 6. Look down in verse 24. In verse 24, he's telling them, and they burned the city with fire and everything in it. They were committed to keep God's commandments. The people there that were with Joshua and this army, they were willing to keep the commandments. They went in and they were committed to destroy everything, no matter how good it was, no matter how beautiful it was, no matter how they could have taken it and hoarded it and said, well, we may need to use this one day, so let's go stick it in our shed. They didn't do that. They destroyed it all. Just as the Lord had commanded them. It continues there in verse 24. And they put it into the treasures of the house of God. You see, there were some things, the silver, the gold, the bronze, all these things were to be collected. God had told them to do it. And told them to put it in the treasury for the house of God. They were committed to do what God had told them to do. Do you notice? Do you see success there? Do you see great things happening for them as they're being faithful and committed to what God has commanded them to do? Great things are happening. Great things can happen to you and me. Great things can happen here at Calvary if we will show the commitment to God's commandments. If we will show the commitment to our relationship with God The third C, look in chapter 7, verse 1. The third C is compromise. Verse 1, chapter 7, the first part of that verse, but the people of Israel broke faith in regards to their devoted things. There were some of them, and it gives you the list of them there. They decided not to be committed to God. They decided that they saw these things that they just had to have. These things that they thought were going to affect their lives for the better. They would take it and it would help them down the road. Even though God had told them to destroy it. They decided to keep it for themselves. Now check out what's about to happen. It says there, verse 1, it says, chapter 7, verse 1 says, took some of the devoted things. Do you realize that these people, they started compromising their relationship with God? They weren't keeping the commandments. They weren't committed to the commandments. They started compromising. They started creating some gray areas. Just a little bit. A little bit won't hurt. Or I'll just do a little here and then I'll repent. That's not how this works. When God tells us to do something, when God tells us to live a certain way, when God tells us to do the things He tells us to do, we are to be committed to those things. There's no room for compromise. Because when we start compromising, we start messing up. And failure begins to happen. The fourth C is a consequence. Look at the end of verse 1 of chapter 7, Joshua. 
it says the very last sentence of that verse is, and the anger of the Lord burned against the people. Not just the ones that had messed up, but entire Israel. The people of Israel, the entire camp God was upset with. His anger, it says, burnt against all of them. Not just the ones that made the mistake. Do you realize that you and me, when we come and we join the body of believers, and we say, this is where God has called me to be, where God has called me to worship, where God's called me to be a part of this body, you and I become one in Christ. And we are to be committed to that body. We are to not compromise that body. Because when we do, there are consequences. And when we mess up and we fall short of that, it doesn't just affect you. It affects us all. And we need to hit that refresh button when we have hindered the whole body. Look in verse 5, dealing with the consequences. Joshua had sent some of these men to go into this area where it was a small area, small group of people. They should have just wiped them out. And these people said, look, they're so small up there, just send a few men. And those few can just wipe them right out. Joshua goes, okay, that's a good idea. Just sending the whole herd of us up there and just wiping them out. We'll just wipe them off. Well, they should have been successful. But guess what had happened? It started compromising. And now they were fixing to experience the consequences of the actions of just a few. In verse 5, 36 men were killed and the rest of them were chased out of town. And it says, the last sentence of verse 5, it says, their hearts of the people melted and just like because of water. It, it, the fear overtook them so much it was just like they were non-existent. And Joshua, not understanding How in the world did this happen? How in the world did some of my men just get killed? How in the world did the men I sent up there to wipe out this little bitty group of people run like cowards? And Joshua knew something wasn't right. And here's the thing. Is there something not right in our church today? Yep, there is. There's something that is not right. There's been a little too much compromise going on. There's been a little too lax on keeping God's commandments. There's been a little bit too much of not being committed to God the way we know He wants us to be. But you know what? That's our past. Today is our future. Today is a day in which we can change. Our fifth C, confronting. Look down in verse 19. Joshua had went before the Lord, and as he went before the Lord, he had talked to God about what to do about this situation, this state in which Israel is in. And the Lord told Joshua what to do, and Joshua was doing it. And he came to verse 19, and he came to the group of people and the family and the clan in which had compromised, had sinned. And Joshua confronted them in the last sentence of verse 19. It says, and tell me now what you have done and do not hide it from me. Joshua realized that this was the clan, this was the group that had made the mistake. And Joshua says, look, Don't lie to me. Tell me what you've done. Don't even try to hide it. Because you're trying to hide it's what's got us in this. It's time now to deal with it. 
Here's the thing. It's time that we start praying and calling on the name of the Lord. And we ask God to search our hearts and search our minds. And if He sees any offensive way, any sin in our lives, for Him to convict you and me and that we repent. It is not my job to stand here and put someone down or to convict you. Because I'm going to tell you, if I convict you, by the time you get to your car, that conviction is gone. But if the Spirit of God convicts you, you can't run away from it. You can't hide from the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And here's the thing. The Holy Spirit needs to confront you and me where we have compromised, where we have fallen short, just as Joshua was told by God to confront these people. Our sixth C, there's a confession. Look in verse 20. This clan, this, they answered Joshua, and it says, Truly, I have sinned against the Lord of Israel, and this is what I did. He started going into what he had done and how they had sinned against God. Do you realize that just when we say, oh God, forgive me of our, our sins, we try to paint it with a big brawl paintbrush? That ain't what God's asking us to do. God is telling us, get the little bitty, tiny, tiny, tiny brush and let's start painting details. Confessing our sins in details to the Lord that He will renew and refresh our relationship with Him. You see, that is what is needed in our hearts and our lives today. Our seventh C is conquer. Do you realize that when we confess the sin, when we get right with God, we're going to be conquerors. We're going to be successful. We're going to accomplish greatness for the Lord. Check out what happens. Once the sin, the issues was dealt with, it was handled in the manner in which God had told them to deal with it, here's what happens. Verse 26. Halfway through that verse, it says, Then the Lord turned from His burning anger, you see, the Lord had forgiven them. His anger was no more. It was no more burning against them. And now they were about to go and continue being successful in what the Lord was calling them to do. Do you belong to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you say yes, Wes, I challenge you this morning, hit the refresh button on your relationship with Him. Make it fresh today. Make it what the Lord wants it to be. So that you and I can be conquerors for the Lord. If you're here today and you say, Wes, I don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day you can have that relationship with the Lord. And you can start that relationship and start becoming the conqueror that God wants you to become. That's a great lesson in those two chapters about a relationship with God. Let's pray.